My name is Jim Hackenberg. I'm a PGA member, and this is my 15th year with Orange Whip. I started it in January of 2008. Okay. Yep. And I've seen it around, but having you with me is going to make all the difference in the world. Explain Orange Whip to me. So I was a wannabe tour player, didn't make it as a player, became a teacher. As a teacher, I was fairly technical and probably making it harder for some golfers because I was controlling the motion. I had the good opportunity to caddy on the PGA Tour in 2003, 4, and 5. My final year was for a Canadian, Glenn Natchek. Worked with Glenn. And when I was out on tour, I was able to watch the best players in the world hit balls every day. And as I was watching them hit, I noticed that rhythm and balance was the key element. So I thought, well, how do I teach rhythm and balance? Like, what is the key element to it? The more people try to control their body and hit an object, it doesn't develop rhythm or balance. So I came up with an idea to take away the club head and put a, an orange weighted ball so they would just swing the ball rather than try to control a club face. I made a flexible shaft so that you could learn timing. Timing is another difficult thing to, to encourage. Finally, I added a counterbalance to it. Steel heavy ball to this end and what it does is it balances out the device by having a heavy weight here and the grip and then an orange ball here, you've got a perfectly balanced device. When I swing it back and forth, slowly at first and then gradually building up, it wants to be on plane in balance. And it's because of this counterbalance. So it's naturally teaching the swing plane without people knowing they're learning the swing plane, but it does it naturally through physics. Amazing. So I've noticed that you have a number of different products here. Uh, and the orange ball on, on the end are different sizes. You want to explain why you sure. have different sizes now? So we started with the heavy one because it's almost like a way to loosen up and stretch, but the more you can feel that weight, the more you swing and the less likely you chop or force it. And I made different sizes for either different height people or different swings. Like I'll use this as my driver. I use the mid-size as my long iron. And we have a compact back over here, which is much shorter for my short irons. But I also can use that indoors. The smaller ball is our speed trainer. Everything is the same with that one, except instead of a 10 and a half ounce ball, we have a three ounce smaller ball. That makes it much easier to swing faster. So I warm up with my orange whip trainer. I go to the orange whip light speed with the smaller ball if I want to speed it up. And then we've even branched off into the short game. We have a wedge and a putter with the orange whip shaft, the patented counterbalance, and we put a putter head on it, and then we put a wedge head on it. Stan Utley had helped us train it and build it, and Stan Utley is, he works with many tour pros in the short game. And he teamed up with us to develop these to help people with the same concept, load and unload, and let the energy get delivered to the ball rather than trying to force it to the ball. So we've, we've, it's been an evolution of all aspects of the game. And this year I'm introducing something even newer. We call it Chappy Golf. It's one club. It's right and left handed, so you don't need to get a different set for that. You don't need 14 of them, you just need one. It's about the loft of a seven iron. The bottom of it is rounded so it's easy to skim across the surface and much easier to hit and create a comp uh, an impact. Now, the ball we use, I'll grab one of those here. It's bigger, it's the size of a baseball, but much lighter. And the wind resistance allows it to basically float while it's spinning in the air after impact. A good player can hit hooks, fades, high and low shots. They can create a golf course in a much smaller area. This only goes one third the distance, so about 100 yards maximum. By creating this fun game, you could play in a park. You could go to a, a, the beach and hit it down the beach and play there. A par three course becomes a bunch of par fours because you can't quite get there in one shot. So it's going to open the door to more golfers, less intimidating, much more accessible, let's call it. So I'm very excited about it. I was even playing in the snow with it. I was up in North Dakota at Christmas and I was hitting it out in a field of snow and I found all the balls and I was able to hit them. It was a blast. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, Golfers, doesn't matter where, when, how. Exactly right. If there's a way to practice the swing, let's do it. Exactly. Thanks so much, Jim. I really appreciate it. You bet, Fred. Enjoyed talking with you. You too. Thank you.